Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Twem, and today I'm going to talk with Sasha Kerbo, a Russian actress who lives in the US. Now I'm waiting for her to join the chat so that we can start our conversation together. I should also mention that uh, this live show uh, was recommended by Anna, our Russian agent. Uh, hi, Bita. Hi, everyone. Hi, Vane Varano, if I uh, pronounced it correctly. Sasha is here. Let me invite her. Yes. Hey, Sasha. Hi. Good How are you doing? Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> How's everything with you? Good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Nice to see you. And uh, hello, everyone. Thank nice you. to see you, too. And uh, thanks a lot for joining me today. And uh, Sasha, I have a series of questions ready for you. But uh, before that, would you please uh, briefly introduce yourself? Yes. Hi. Um, so I'm Sasha Kerbel. I am an actress from Russia, from Moscow, Russia. Um, a couple of years ago, I moved here to L.A. and stayed here. <laughs> <laughs> so how come? Well, uh, almost accidentally, I got to say. So I, well, I've been always searching for international projects. I wanted to work worldwide. And so I was seeking for um, casting calls from different countries. And so I responded uh, to a casting call from the United States and was cast. And it was rather unexpectedly. It was very funny. I was with my then partner. We were just chilling a Saturday night. And it was 1 a.m. We were watching some movie. And here, uh, all of a sudden, my phone rings. And we're like, seriously? I was like, who is calling at 1 a.m.? He said, well, probably it's Steven Spielberg to tell you your past <laughs> Hollywood movie. And I look at the number and I say, no. I said, this is the American number. And I say, uh, hello. And it's not Steven Spielberg, but it was the director of that movie. <laughs> and he said, well, congratulations. I couldn't wait to talk to you in person, but we are welcoming you to our team. And so, and the rest was like, oh, it was all the miracle. And it was so fun. And so um, I've been filming for a while in this movie and it was my first time here in America. And I was, it was so funny because I was always telling people that I don't want to go to America as a tourist. I'm an actress. I want to go to America for the first time as an actress. Because it's so sort of... You did it. And so, and I did it, yes. And then there was this movie and then I was going back and forth and I grew to love this country. Uh, I spent here basically two years like going back and forth uh, from, and I've been, at first we were filming in Oregon and then California and then to LA. It was all really cool and I, start, and I was missing Los Angeles every time when I left it. And then there was a movie premiere. And so I came here for the movie premiere and I took my son here and uh, we did. And so, and then the, there was a premiere and all of that. And I planned to spend here maybe like four months because there was, the premiere was in New York City. And then they said there will be the premiere in LA and you know, the promotional events and all of that. So of course I wanted to stay for that. That's the sweetest part of being an actor after work to like have some of those parties and red carpets. And so I was like, yeah, sure. And then the producers of the film, they said that, well, we really like you and we have a couple of other projects. So I got three more projects here and they said, but you know, it doesn't make sense for us economically, financially to bring you every time here. Why don't you just stay? And I was like, what do I have to lose? I had nothing to lose. Basically, I was like, OK, let me stay. It's fun. Sure enough, none of these projects ever. <laughs> <laughs> ever but then I stayed and then I met my husband here and here we are and now I'm an official Angelino <laughs> so <laughs> that's how it went that's great how Los Angeles uh, is attracting talent from all over the world so when you are there it's very hard I think to live there well you know first of all there is a lot of work there is more work than 
anywhere else for artists of all genres. So, you know, people, the perception is this, okay, she or he went to conquer Hollywood and where are you? Are you already Brad Pitt? Are you already Meryl Streep? No, <laughs> you loser. You're like another loser in Hollywood. It's not quite true because not everyone who comes here, well, of course the ambition is to conquer Hollywood and all of that, but not everyone has it strongly. It, it, for artists, what, as we know, as you know, I'm pretty sure, uh, the main component of life <laughs> for artists is to be able to create, to do our art. And especially for those who are completely dependent, like for instance, a writer can write, write and write and write and, and love it and spend their life writing. For actor, I mean, you're dependent on casting, you're dependent on this on that. And of course, yeah, you can create something yourself, but sometimes you don't have this what it takes, you know, to make a project on your own. So you're not a producer, you're maybe not have this, don't have this talent of a producer or of a director, or you cannot assemble the, the crew or whatever. So you usually depend at least on a team who will support you and will make it happen for you. So, but here, there are a lot of opportunities for actors. There are a lot of commercials, there are a lot of projects, independent projects. Uh, you know, and of course, Hollywood castings and sometimes actors who are, for instance, international actors who are well known in their countries, they will do background work just to be able to see what it is like to be on a Netflix show or whatever. And, you know, so, I mean, it can be fun. And there are tons of voiceover work. It's way more than definitely way more than in Russia. And so I am pretty happy. And plus, you know, having a kid, you know. I am, my personal position is that you've got to have fun in your life and you've got to be happy and live in harmony. So I know a lot of people who come here with an intention to become a famous dancer or famous singer, but then they, switch, they find something like, for instance, they get fascinated with street art and here we go. They become street artists or like, you know, like something like that. Or somebody, you know, get into the family business, <laughs> you know, and doing that. So there are a lot of things. It's not, and it's, uh, it's just a city, just like any other city where you can live and have fun and do whatever you want. So, I mean, that's what I like about that. And I sometimes I take breaks. Like, for instance, I hustle, hustle, hustle and do this project and that project. And then I'm like, you know what? I get tired of it. I will just relax and switch to something else and it's always you know very rewarding and especially because you know i have a kid and a family so and for how long have you been working in russia before you could get that project well you know i had a long career in entertainment and usually i you know now it's thank goodness it's changing but women in this industry have to lie about their age all the time because otherwise you don't get cast, you're too old. And so we, we pretend we're like 10 to 20 years younger than we are. So I've been for a long time in the entertainment business and I started as a TV journalist in the news. And then I was, a, and then I was uh, upgraded to a host. And then they decided that I'm too young and I can, people don't trust me. The audience don't trust the newscaster who is so young. I was like, what, like 17? And I, I started working pretty early. And so they moved me out. They removed me from, you know, hosting. And, uh, and it seemed so boring to me, especially because the new subjects were so adult, so boring, like politics, like divorces. They, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. They sent me to cover like a theme of divorce. And there was this terrible couple. There was this poor husband who was a military guy and he was like completely abused by his wife. And the wife was very loud and she was screaming at him like this. And she saw us reporters, she said, ah, here you are. And they were like these case, they agreed for us to film their battle in the court. And it was so disgusting. She was so disgusting. She said, I went <laughs> to the boss and I told them how, what, that he's an idiot. That is. And 
terrified. And I was, at that time I was, and I was like, I cannot do it. And so I, I asked my, that was very unprofessional, but I was young. I asked my cameraman, I said, could you finish filming it? I couldn't stay there. And I, I ran away. And I went straight to my boss and I said, you know what? I resign. I don't, I can't do this. And so, and I went to musical radio and instead, and it was fun because there were young people there. And I was, you know, after TV on radio, they kind of immediately embraced me because it was considered, you know, people from radio wanted to move to TV and not the other way around. Is this and, more fun than the divorce topic? <laughs> musical radio and it was Russian American radio station and they were Russians and Americans. It was so much fun. And I worked there and I had my own show. I was a, at some point I was a morning, uh, morning show host. Uh, I was, I had a Friday night show about club music, club life. And I had all these cards, you know, VIP cards to all the nightclubs and everybody knew me. I knew everyone. What do you need when you're 20 years old, right? And what else do you need? And then I was also accepted. I went to, you know, just for, uh, they just opened MTV in Russia. And I, I worked with MTV Europe, with MTV UK. Uh, I worked with them. I did a show with them on radio. And also we worked together. They invited me to uh, MTV Europe sports and... Uh, I was Russian who was covering it uh, ever. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. I met a lot of cool people there. And uh, and so it was the next uh, step, very logical for me to go to MTV Russia. Uh, and so I nailed the audition. And, uh, you know, I had, a you know, now, especially it's so funny, with English language, kind of voices slightly I talk higher, like on a higher pitch. So it's a lower voice when I speak Russian. And and they really loved that low voice. And they, I will be that sexy nighttime host. But then there was this, you know, uh, with my radio contract, there was, you know, a mess with that. And I turned out I had no right I had to choose and I didn't want to choose MTV over my radio because I really loved my station and all these people. And I had so many primetime shows there. So it was silly. For, I, I felt it was silly for me to lose it. So I stayed there. But then, you know, I've been, I started as an actress. I started as an actress and then kind of, I went to this other uh, TV and radio but throughout all these years, I felt like, yeah, it's been a lot of fun, but I want to be an actress. I still want to be an actress and I can't help it. So then I started working in that direction. And again, I ended up on a different radio station somehow because I couldn't resist it. So that was lasted quite a while. And then I said, okay, I cannot become Oh, and then people started saying, well, you're not an actress. You're a famous. And I was really like, well, known. you're a famous host. You're a famous. And then I got some TV shows to host as well. So I was the radio and TV host at the time. I was like, you're a TV host. You're a radio host. You're not an actress. In Russia, it wasn't like in our mindset that it could be both. So I was like, okay, I need to part with my image of a host. And so I quit radio, I quit TV, I quit all of that. I changed my name for Alexandra Callas. Uh, and and Callas because uh, at that time I married uh, uh, an actor, Stanislav Callas. Um, and uh, so I took his name. I was like, perfect. And I started over as actress Alexandra Callas. And at uh, first, my first uh, luck was that I was cast uh, on an MTV show to play a reporter. So win-win, <laughs> I knew all of that. And so after that, uh, some the director, I started talking to him like, what do I do next? He said, well, you have to get a formal training because it's not that easy as you might think. Although I always felt great in front of the camera. And so I went to and uh, got into college, uh, like theater, theater school drama school and so i graduated from that and during that time my teacher she was a director in one of the very famous theaters in moscow and she tried a couple of us her, her, 
uh, whom she trusted in uh, some performances. And then she kind of initiated that. And I, you know, I ended up in that theater. And, uh, and it was easier because when you have some theater that you belong to, it's easier, like people take you more seriously. And then I got a red diploma, which means that uh, cum laude. So um, with honors, I graduated from this theater school. And so, and that's how it started. And then I got an agent. Uh, she was also like a like-minded person. She's Croatian. Her name is Gordon Milevcic. And um, but she lives in Moscow in Russia. And we, she just started out as an agent. She had different business before that. And I said, listen, um, let's do something fun. I don't want to work just in Russia. I want to work internationally. And so we started working together. Now she's a very well-known uh, agent in Russia and in former Yugoslavia and her actors work internationally all over the place and all over the world. And it's really fun. And so, and, you know, when I started searching for that for parts and, you know, got, uh, then I was cast in like a Russian television and some smaller film projects. So it's funny. I've, oh no, I've been in one film, but it was a very tiny part in Russian film. Huh, I'm yet to land that part in the <laughs> big part in the Russian. So, and then that happens. So, I'm usually going with the flow. I think I, yeah, I'm just where the fun is. You know? I, I noticed that you made so brave moves time to time, like changing name, like going from radio and TV to another field, being an actress. Again, before it, yes, so many things. So as you said, this is your passion. So you go as you like, and that's what makes your work, uh, like we can connect to your work somehow. That, that's what you do as an artist, and we really appreciate that. By the way, you mentioned about having a low voice in Russia, and they prefer that. This is absolutely correct, because when I used to live in Russia, for example, let's say I was in a restaurant, then I uh, tried to talk in lower voice so that they can take me more seriously, ah, <laughs> you know? <laughs> that is true. And, you know, and even, you know, you're like in different languages, you speak with different areas of, you know, your mouth and throat. So some like when you speak with British accent or like British English, it's like more here in the throat. And when you speak French, it's all in the lip your lips and when you speak russian it's somewhere here too and also because a lot of you know here i hear the girls that usually have like sort of like a higher pitched voices exactly, exactly. So, and I, i'm like a parrot i I'm <laughs> copy you know impersonate people so like for instance 20 minutes with someone talking to someone who has a higher pitch voice, I start talking like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, why I feel like a tension <laughs> in my neck. That's why. I totally get that. And uh, among all of those projects that you have been, there are so many of them. I check your IMDb. There are so many projects that you have been, especially as an actor. So which one was your favorite one in all yes. these years? It's, uh, um, isn't it 10 days in a madhouse? You know, I would say so. It's been a very complicated story with this project, but I would say that is my favorite because it was this miracle in my life. It was my first American film and everything was magical to me. And I, I didn't care about anything. I went to this beautiful state, Oregon. It's a beautiful state. And, and it like the nature is mind blowing. And it was winter and it was snowing and everybody around was complaining that it's snowing, that it's cold. And I was like, oh, it's like Christmas town here. And it was like, so, and I, uh, I met these girls that were my victims because I was an evil person there but uh and so they were i was torturing them you they, were the nurse right yeah i was the nurse yes 
and uh, and these girls, we became friends, and we a lot of time. There were adventures there uh, between filming. I've spent there seven weeks. I was supposed to spend there three weeks filming my part, but then uh, like the, all the crew got flu, and there was no one who could work. So they gave us like, I think one or two weeks just to hang out. So I was like, yay, cool. And so I stayed there for seven weeks. And in between filmings, we were, you know, driving around together. And every day we were like, we go have breakfast together, dinners together. And we lived in the same hotel. And of course we were like having movie nights right after filming or like, this or that or go to jacuzzi all together you know like so that was that was really fun and um uh, and honestly i was dreaming about this film making it to russia officially with a official premiere because i wanted to show them uh, my country and you know to invite everyone over and i've been dreaming about that that didn't happen but um we're still friends with most of the of the girls and some guys from there uh and we're yeah um t two of them moved to la too oh even three well and one of one girl that i met there i mean she was supposed to be um in the movie she was supposed to play uh the sister of N there were there was the whole part about the childhood of Nellie Bly, who was the journalist and the lead character. And uh, this girl, she was cast as a, her, her sister for those scenes about her childhood. It was a child actor. She was 14 at the time. And we became Facebook friends. And that, so after it turned out, that the movie had to be sh shrinked. And they they cut out those scenes so it never happened and uh she never ended up in this movie but we became facebook friends we became friends somehow we were chatting and then she i moved to la and then a year later she moved to la she's from seattle she moved to la and her name is rochelle henry and she became my friend and then with her and with my other friend uh, Rico E. Anderson, also a brilliant actor. We did a show here during the pandemic. It was our pandemic fun because uh, we were, uh, you know, bored and uh, lonely. And so we uh, launched this talk show, The Lightning Hour, and we invited our friends from the film industry and uh, music industry as well. And so, uh, and it was fun and we kind of were we're friends we're close friends right now and now she is well soon she will turn 21 <laughs> but you know so but i know her since she was 14 and so that's a lot of fun so that movie gave me a lot and i still there were a lot of drama there too with um yeah the the other side of this <laughs> of the team and the, there was some drama with this movie but i still for me it's the dearest memory uh, by the way please correct me if i'm wrong that i notice in hollywood usually they prefer to hire uh, ukrainian comparing to russians do you think is that the case and is it getting better for russians during the last day that last years or not uh could you could you repeat it again i, I, I notice that it. usually in hollywood they hire ukrainians comparing to oh, russians yeah you know what i wouldn't even say that well, first of all, there are a lot of Ukrainians here. And usually, you know, for, honestly, for Americans, um, Russians are, you know, people from Kazakhstan, from Ukraine, from Belarusia, from Georgia, from, you know, and sometimes even from Poland, Czech Republic, they still call them Russians. Like a lot of people, it's just Russians. And... Uh, like like Asian, suddenly many like, countries uh, Asian. But we say Americans, we means you. We mean USA, and not all the other country that are that exist on this continent. You know, it's like traditionally, it's somehow that. So when I meet Russians, like oh, here is a Russian guy or a Russian girl, a Russian actor. Very often, it's Ukrainian. Uh, it's people from Ukraine. So, so, but you know, unfortunately, that's. I don't think that's the case 
uh, for unfortunately for Russians and Ukrainians, um, they cast in a lot of cases like Bulgarians or Serbian actors as Russians for them, or sometimes German actors, because it's considered that our accents are like German and I played German nurse. And so, so I really hope, and especially with um, the success of uh, Maria Bakalova, or I don't know where to, how to correctly pronounce the last name in Bulgarian, but um, the success with that she was nominated for Oscars, I think that's a brilliant, that's tremendous for all the Eastern European uh, actors because we get seen now. Unfortunately, you know, it's a, now that the Russian American relations are going to nowhere, and I'm really hoping that Putin and Biden will agree on something and it will get better. But it's sort of like Russians are bad, Russians are bad. I don't know about, but it's, you know, there is a balance here because on the other hand, if Russians are villains, that probably more Hollywood scripts will have Russian villains, which means more parts for Eastern European actors. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> At least you guys have better positions than Middle Easterns. So at least you are a main villain. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. And you know, well, yeah, you know, what's bad for the world, what's bad for political situation is good for actors because then the scripts include this bad guys and that's us who will get paid for it to play those bad guys. Um, also, as for actors, you know, like for instance, I have uh, I have an accent. Obviously, maybe it's not like super thick. Maybe it's uh, on a lighter side, but I have an accent. And a lot of people told me you got to get rid of the accent in order to blend in and be able to um, play more roles and all of that. I disagree with that. I disagree with that because my accent is is a part of me. It's what makes me unique. It's what makes me me. It's what makes me, what reminds people that I'm of Russian descent. And, well, Russian Jewish to be completely, you know, like specific. You have Matryoshka on your background, so I noticed that you really care oh, about yes. that. <laughs> and by the way, that's a portrait of my son by me. Oh, so, that's cool. Yeah. Kruta. <laughs> so, yeah, Matryoshka, yeah, absolutely. And so... You know, so I want to be me. I want my identity to be represented the year too. And there are a lot of Russians and there are a lot of people of different colors, of different ethnicities, of different um, accents here living in America. And, and they are Americans. And so I don't see why Hollywood cannot reflect that. It's already started to turn. These wheels are turning fine. Uh, and so there will be a point when Russians and Eastern Europeans and all the other accents will be acceptable, not strictly for that role of a Russian or role of that Eastern European or that Middle Eastern, but just because Americans, people who live here, they have all these, all these ethnicities. So I That's hope that... Sooner or later, we will win. <laughs> Our... <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> and uh, Sasha, I know that you will have an appointment about 30 minutes, so I'm going to wrap this up. Just one more thing. Uh, we have a challenge on our page named Crazy Eyebrow. We try to pull one eyebrow up, one down. Can you do that? <laughs> yes, I, not bad. I'm more than... Wait, let me... Now I, I, I'm not going anywhere till I... <clears throat> Uh -huh. yeah. This one is very good. Yes, yes. This one is very good. Ah, it doesn't work. <laughs> but your face looks funny after that. <laughs> <laughs> but let's see what I can do. <laughs> no, you're yeah. good with your facial <laughs> expression for sure. <laughs> so, and Sasha, I thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. It's so, it's such a pleasure to be here and to talk to you. And yeah, I am, I want to say that also me personally, I love working internationally. So if anyone wants a person with a Russian accent that, well, with a slight But accent. at this stage, would you consider unpaid job or no? You just consider professional paid jobs at the moment. 
Well, of course, I prefer paid jobs, but sometimes, you know, like sometimes I participate in student films uh, because sometimes the scripts are good and sometimes I want to play this part. It's just the part that I want to play, but I haven't get cast for this part for some or, or ever or some time. And I want to, I just want to play this character and explore this character. So it doesn't matter. I mean, as long as I don't have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Sasha, thanks a lot for joining me today. I really appreciate your time. It was wonderful talking with you. Thank you so much. It was lovely talking to you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Paka, paka. Paka.